Hey, what's up, you guys? I'm here with the talent of Mr. Pickles. Hello, Frank <laughs> Collison. Caitlin Robrock. Jay Johnston, I do Mr. Goodman. Awesome. This is Tommy. I'm Tommy. And I do... Grandpa. 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 I <laughs> forgot! And uh, Mr. Bo Jenkins. Awesome. Do you have to, like, stick to the script completely, or do you get to <laughs> improv a lot, or...? I, I try to go for the script to see, like, what they've decided, what they've worked hard on, and what what their vision is, and then if it, if it works, you know, if, if it's organic and it's within the flow of the story, take it different directions, see if it's like, hey, I didn't think of that before, and stick it in there, or different ways of reading it to get different reactions, and just, they're always open for more, open for interpretation, open for ideas, and just, but whatever they initially decide on, there's so much love put in it anyway, that it's going to be great. Yeah, Will awesome. and, and Dave were definitely open to happy accidents, and then they actually when you do, after you do the scripted stuff, they say, other, is there some other way you can say this line? And we'll mm -hmm. free associate sometimes and you know, scary the way it goes. Do you guys feel you have more freedom to be more edgy in the performance since you're not in front of the camera? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then yeah. work with what the, the script is telling us. Find the, find, there's the story they tell us, the second story underneath it. Improv, um, different reads of different lines to see which direction do you want to take it and there's so much freedom. And that's what's kind of unique and fun about uh, voice stuff is that uh, you can take it to weird places where perhaps when the animator is hearing the track they don't know what the fuck you're doing. I'm sorry. They don't know what you're doing and they're they're just going off of a sound or a uh, you know an emotional cue or something which yeah. can then you know they can take it in another direction or, or add to it so I think it's it does you know one builds on the other. I, I have no idea what you're talking about but <laughs> I, I'm totally method I have to feel every moment. For Caitlin what is it like being like one of the few women in this crazy genre? Well <laughs> grandpa I know. Um, it's it's nice because for, for all the different female roles that come up uh, depending on the archetype of the character, depending where they want to go with it. I audition for those roles, just like all the other ladies. And if, if, if it fits, if it's not too similar to other roles I do, um, they'll take me, uh, since they can get three out of you for the price of one. Um, but if they want something completely opposite, that way there's a lot more flavor and richness, they'll have other ladies come in as well. Okay. And some days I do just Tommy, or some days I'll come in and I'll do four or five voices just for, for the needs they have. And I hold on to some of the voices that would have worked, but if they're for one-off characters, but they want to expand them for later use. So like, we'll go with somebody else this time, but hold on to that voice for something else. Have you guys ever worked on a project about murdering and raping canines before? Oh, canines? <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> Not well, enough. that's so specific. <laughs> if you take out the canine aspect, I did some work for Drawn Together. And that oh, okay. Had, that had just as much fun and hilarity as yeah. this show did. That's awesome. I've been murdered on camera, but, <laughs> and I, but I have never done any harm to a dog on camera, if that's what you're asking. Yeah. yeah, not that much harm to animals in this show, just humans. Yeah, really. mostly. Yeah. And ones who deserve it generally. So. <laughs> By way of an animal. Exactly. Yeah, and it's a lot of stuff in there about Satanism, but it's not yeah. a religious show, so don't worry about it. <laughs> so have people, like, found it offensive with all, like, the Satanism and killing and... Oh, they will. <laughs> I am really... I don't even have to try and people will be offended. <laughs> really looking forward to the reviews. Yeah. I think the reviews within the people that like this kind of stuff, and there's so much in media now that you can basically seek out what you like and ignore the rest, so... Yeah. Um, you, you know, can't if, say something nice, don't say I think if this were wrong. airing at 8 p.m. on a network show, that would be <laughs> a problem. But this is yeah. definitely going to be something that... This is late night. What's the acquired taste? Uh, yeah, you're not going to tune in to, uh, to watch the other content around this uh, and be shocked by what's in this show, I think. Yeah. You know? And it's also not just uh, shock stuff. I mean, it's, it's funny and it oh, you yeah. know, has a... There's you know, comment, and, you know, a little bit, and, and that mm -hmm. type of thing. So I think it supports itself. Yeah. You know. It'd be like going to Vegas and say, what, there's gambling around here? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Just, what type of gambling do you want to do? Yeah. You're all yeah. going to the same place. So. Yeah. I came Get here your, for the hookers. What's all this gambling? Get your chips and your doobies and I like watch the, food. the show. What is it like working with Brooke Shields? Brooke uh, records out of New York, I believe. And 
I, I believe she loves the show. A friend of mine worked <laughs> with her when she was directing a show out here in L.A., and he had mentioned that, like, my friend is your son on the show, and she, and she, she just said, like, it's, it's a hell of a show, got to go in prepared to do it, but I, I love her work on the show. Um, and I'll get to your second part, but talk about that. Yeah, we record <laughs> separately, so we don't really run into each other except in the hall, and if you're doing them in New York, we don't run into you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Never met her. <laughs> Worked Can't with her 24 years ago <laughs> on a right. film where they said, oh, Brooke is playing a child psychiatrist. And I said, you mean she's a child who is a psychiatrist <laughs> or a psychiatrist who treats? Yeah, she, it was a long time ago, about 24 years ago. But I don't think we can let any interview go by without speaking of going off script, without mentioning Robin Williams, because people mm. have been talking about him. And, um, I worked. I was worked with a guy who was on his last show, um, crazy, the crazy, crazy ones. Crazy ones. And I said, he, he, he improvised most of that, didn't he? And surprisingly, they said no. He didn't. Oh wow. He would do a twist and turn here, but it was surprising to learn that. But because he's such an incredible improviser, and I know totally. for when they showed the clips of him doing uh, the genie, they had to. They he just went all kinds of crazy places. They they gave yeah. him guidelines hit this point at some point and go from there. And one sto a story that I had heard was he, he was asked to sing one of the songs from the movie and they said, like, sing it the way it was composed and written, which he did. And then they said, all right, now let him do his thing. Just to, just for, for the heck of it, playing with money. Yeah. And so he went in and did Friend Like Me the way he just felt like doing it and that ended up being the take they took because that oh, was wow. what was embodying the character the most. Because if, if you're going to make this character that actor just animated let them do their thing mm. i'm gonna wrap it up so but thank you guys so much well, and it's been you. awesome and i can't wait to see the rest of the show it's gonna be yeah. awesome too it's a lot of fun right. thanks thank right. you guys Bye.